Hi again, Attorney Steve Vonder. We are talking in this video about Business Software Alliance. I get a lot of questions from people. They get a letter from a company and it says, from the Business Software Alliance. So just what is this organization? Is it law enforcement? Is it the cops? Is it the software police? What is it? Without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve whiteboard. Okay, so let's back it up here and we're gonna talk a little bit about Business Software Alliance, okay? Now, Business Software Alliance is not law enforcement. It's not the software cops per se. Not the software cops per se. It is a trade group made up of many different software companies, some of the largest software providers in the United States, if not the world. And this group makes up, you can look at different stats and see different things, but makes up probably 50, 75% of all software sold is through these organizations. So these are the giant industry software leaders. Let's take a look. You have, of course, Microsoft. Naturally, they're going to be on the list. You have Autodesk. They do a lot of software audits for AutoCAD, you know, the software for architects and engineers. You have Adobe. Adobe is enforcing some fonts right now. They're doing fonts. If you're copywriting their fonts illegally, they may came up, come after you. Apple, another large one. McAfee. Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone is the um, translation software where you can learn another language. Now where this comes in sometimes, interestingly, is you'll have these employees, maybe they're back in their cubicles or they're back in another office or remotely and you don't know where they're at and on the company computer, because you're not paying them enough or it's not their dream job, they're over there installing Rosetta software, they're using it to build their resume. So as employers, you need to look out for this kind of thing. You know, they're on company time, on company computers, why is the software there? Is it benefiting you? Are they actually learning to become a second language to help you in your business? There's a lot of things you gotta be aware of. So Rosetta Stone's one of the members. Bentley Software is one of the members. IBM, one of the members. And there's a handful of other members, okay? So it's a trade group made up of these um, big, large, successful, multinational, global software companies, okay? And their mission is to stop or reduce the number of illegally copyrighted software, okay? Copyright bootleg software, uh, making illegal copies, uh, Microsoft not buying your Cal licenses, this is a big issue, your Exchange server license, your Windows server's license, so not paying for these licenses that you need to access the critical software. So they're a trade group, and from time to time, what you'll see is you'll see them run campaigns such as bust your boss or nail your boss. Um, I, I saw something the other day on Facebook. I was watching it. Uh, one of the side ads was about um, turn, in, turn in your employer, you know, get a reward. You can make some money off this. Be the watchdog. Um, be the whistleblower, you know, those kinds of things. So there's all kinds of things going on there. It's, you know, there's campaigns that are, that are running from time to time, billboards. Um, some, some of you may have seen billboards uh, asking to report piracy. So it's a real big thing, but it's not, it's not per se law enforcement. Now, you have to bear in mind that, you know, what's at issue in these cases, when you get one of these letters, I call it the love letter, you get the love letter and it says, you know, you must hereby submit to a voluntary audit, blah, blah, blah. I'm from the BSA, I'm a representative of the BSA, all the following softwares. Uh, on all of your computers and networks and servers and laptops must be audited. You must give us a spreadsheet. You must tell us every all, give us all your proofs of purchases. Uh, we want to know that everything's paid for and accounted for. It's a self audit. So you'll get one of these love letters from the BSA, okay, the Business Software Alliance. It's an alliance. Now, usually it's from their council. Let's draw a picture out here. That's my picture. So we got basically a lawyer out here. Okay, now usually that's going to be an intellectual property law firm, most of the time, and they're looking at enforcing federal copyright law, federal copyright law. Okay, copyright law is exclusive federal jurisdiction. That means if you're busted for software piracy, um, if you violated the federal copyright law, you're making illegal copies, um, circ circumventing access controls under the DMCA, if you're doing these things, you have federal copyright issues, okay? Because you have federal copyright issues, there are and there have been instances where the U.S. Marshal's Office gets involved. The U.S. Marshal. Um, now, a lot of people don't know what that is. You may have heard about it, but you know the U.S. Marshal's Office is a 
Division of the Department of Justice, United States Department of Justice, okay? So they're high up here. You've got the marshals here. Um, some of you may remember, I think, uh, Wyatt Earp was a U.S. Marshal. So a little history for you. If you're taking notes, write that one down. You win points on that one. Okay, so Wyatt Earp was a U.S. Marshal. So it is possible, and it has been done, that you can see a raid serving search warrants kicking uh, employees off their computers, uh, seizing the software and the computers, the server, seizing everything, and, and basically looking for software pirates. I, I always say they're pursuing pirates, software pirates. So they're looking for this. So these things are possible. Now that is, that is uh, law enforcement. This is the oldest U.S. Marshal, I believe, is the oldest law enforcement agency. So they've been around, like I said, Wyatt Earp going back to who knows when. But this is possible, so you have to bear that in mind. The, the chances are very slim. I don't want to scare you, but you have to understand what's at issue. Federal laws, copyright infringement, and those kinds of things. So when you get the love letter, it's very important. Before you just go calling them and saying, Hi, how you doing? Got your letter. You know, hey, I'm a nice guy. Let's just, let's just settle this and let's work this out real nicely between us. I want to just go over just a couple of what I call the key points. Top five key points will let you out of here. Um, top five key points, okay? Again, one, not law enforcement, but raids are possible in conjunction with U.S. Marshal's Office or other entities. There may be other things involved, Postmaster General, maybe you're mailing the software. So lots of different things could go on. Um, a lot of times these arise by disgruntled employees. You have current employees that could be disgruntled. It could be somebody in your IT department. It could be somebody that, um, it could be a contractor that came in and looked your stuff over. Um, we've had people show up from Craigslist. Oh, I'm here to, here to install some software for you. I've got one good that's all legit. Here's some Autodesk AutoCAD for you. Yeah, just go ahead and use that. And then that person is going and reporting them months later. So there's all kinds of things that pop up in these software audits. But it's key to understand that usually, not always, usually it's a driven by an informant, an insider, a contractor, a disgruntled employee. So being aware of who you have on your teams, monitoring, seeing what they're doing is very, very key. That's a lot of times how they arise. Um, invoices, proofs, okay? So you, you have to have proofs for your software. This is the intellectual property of these companies. This is what makes these companies thrive. It's their copyrighted, their copyrighted software, copyrighted with the US Copyright Office. So they have all that stuff copyrighted, so they're entitled to enforce it, okay? So, but you want to save your invoices, your receipts. You want to have these printed out somewhere and kept in a safe and secure area. We have heard stories of somebody, that, uh, the clerk or somebody that works there in the back room, um, just saying, look, I'm gonna take the invoices, put them here in my pocket, and you know, I'm gonna call the BSA say I don't I know they don't have any proofs for their software what do I care I'm, I'm gonna quit the job in two two weeks anyway so these are the kinds of things that go on so having your receipts having a, a software manager uh, making sure that you're on top of your game as far as compliance that you have those proofs in case you ever get audited very very important so don't just throw those away you save those you buy software from the vendor save those receipts out put them in a folder lock them in a vault um, put them in a secure place okay it's important. You gotta you gotta have the proof for these things. Okay. Um, fifth, uh, fourth key point is this happens quite frequently. I say my opinion is don't talk to their attorneys. Don't get the love letter and go. You know, I you know I had a negotiation class in uh, seventh grade, and I was on the debate team in in junior high and high school. And you know I can I can take on these these IP lawyers. I'm not, I'm not concerned about these IP lawyers. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a few short, but, you know, I'll just negotiate it out. You know, that can be so wrong to do that. We've seen so many, there's so many different defenses that pop up, different types of things. You can find them on my website, by the way. I'm not going to go through them now. I'll do another separate video on, on some of the defenses that are common. You can, for now, go to softwareauditlawyers.com, softwareauditlawyers.com. That'll get you, I've got a whole bunch of information on there to help you, you know, understand and analyze your position. But what I would not do is talk to these parties. You have to understand that most of the attorneys we deal with, most of the attorneys, they are trained. They are actually trained by the BSA. This is according to what they're telling me, so okay. So they're in a room somewhere, they're studying, they're reviewing, they're 
figuring out, figuring out all their negotiation tricks, all the ways they're going to leverage you. Um, some, some of my clients say, isn't this extortion? I say, well, you know, if they have legitimate, if they have legitimate rights, no, it's not extortion. But, um, but, you know, I say before you open your mouth, speak to an attorney, get some legal advice. You, of course, you can handle these by yourself, don't get me wrong. But having an experienced attorney help you through the process, okay, of getting in, helping you with the audit, you know, ensuring that you have a confidentiality agreement in place, negotiating the best deal possible, negotiating from position of strength as opposed to weakness, which would be very difficult for you as a novice, somebody who has not done this. Um, and working you through the settlement agreement, another thing. They're going to want this, that, and the other. You're not going to want that. So there's this process requires, I think, most is best handled by a skilled software lawyer like our firm. We can help you out with this. Um, finally, tip five. Um, these are important, I think, is to understand that, you know, with software infringement, copyright infringement, the officers and directors can be held liable. I mean, this can be potentially a gigantic federal lawsuit. Um, most of the time these get settled privacy, privately, so I don't want you to be scared thinking every case goes into federal court, but it can. They can go into federal court, but I just want you to be aware of looking at things for your company such as employment contracts that talk about the need to, re to maintain things confidentially. Sometimes it's trade secrets. Sometimes you need to think about putting in a trade secret protection program for your company how your different software is set up, what you use, your configurations, you know, that could be something you look at getting trade secret protection for. Now, if you have disgruntled employees that are leaving and they're trying to take this trade secret information that they agreed, let's say in an employment contract to remain confidential, and this pops up, we have a potential breach of an employment contract. We could have breach of a non-disclosure agreement. We could have a theft or not a, a, a wrongful disclosure of a trade secret. So there's lots of things that could come into this. Policies and procedures, employment handbooks, things that talk about don't uh, illegally download software, don't, don't put them on your home computers, don't, you know, having some policies and procedures in place can help you make the case that you're not a willful infringer of copyright because the worst thing that you can have is be deemed a willful infringer. You might as well just call yourself a pirate, you know, so software pirate. So you want to have things in place to show that your company has some good software asset management practices, policies, procedures, supervision, okay, not turning a blind eye. One of the bad defenses is, you know, I never saw anything going on and, you know, I don't, I don't look at what everybody does. It's, you know, it's what they do is what they do. Probably not going to be your best answer, and it looks like you're turning a turning a blind eye to it. Okay, exit contracts. If you terminate some of these employment, um, these IT guys, a lot of, a lot of times IT guys, disgruntled IT guys, or they're moving on, or this other and the other. Exit interviews. Um, having something in place where you know maybe you're having a release at the end. You're you're getting to the end of the employment um, or the independent contractor relationship having something and say, you know, I agree to, this is something oftentimes you can work out with your HR department. We agree to a severance, you're waiving all claims, you know, everything's going to be confidential. And these informants, because it's these informants looking for rewards, motivated by rewards, and sometimes for revenge and just corporate sabotage, it's these people that become the informants for these people and their lawyers and, and so we've done so we're, we've got other information on our website about informants suing informants those kinds of things that you can take a look at at softwareauditlawyers.com okay so this is just a broad overview what is the business software alliance i hope that helps you and gives you a better idea if you need help with an audit software issues litigation federal copyright litigation give us a call we're happy to help we offer low flat rate fees in many of our cases and we would look forward to working with you. Once again, softwareauditlawyers.com. Attorney Steve Vondren, thanks for listening. Feel free to share this video on your social media networks. We'll see you again.